All right, we're sitting here with Jeremy Razor. Jeremy, what's happening, man? Not much, yes, sir. Uh, so there's a big ruckus going on right now, man. A whole lot of stink happening around the whole world. Over 2 million people today saw this video, and a lot of people had a lot of things to say. Some on the good, some on the bad. A lot of people are calling it respectful, what Mike did. Some people are saying it's just a chump move. Maybe he should have took you out on the ground. And uh, so with all the, you know, flipping the uh, flipping around of people's opinions, you know, you have your own opinion about it. And I figured we'd take this opportunity to let you let the world know how you felt. All right. Well, honestly, I did not know what to think when he took that step back and tapped the mat. First, I was, if you watch the video, I was, like, confused, like, what just happened? Then it was anger, like, okay, why did he just do this? What's up, you know? And then I got to talk to the kid, or Mike, I should say, not the kid, but got to talk to him, and he explained it to me, and it's out of respect. I took the fight after working for 12 hours on a roof. I took it for PCFL, Prison City Fight League, just because I, I've always fought at that promotion. It's a hometown promotion. I love that promotion. So I fought for them. They needed somebody to stand in, so I did it. But I felt I had a lot more in me. Like, I, yeah, I got beat up. I got punched a lot, kicked a lot. I was guarded well. I got a bloody nose. It, it's just a bloody nose. I wish it would have continued. Yeah, your record's what right now? Tell them. Uh, my record is 7 and 5. It's, <laughs> You've had your share of bloody noses. Yeah. Yeah. Record 7 and 5. I am 6 and 1 at 125. So I'm not just a slouch. I'm not just the guy out the audience that everybody assumes that I am. Just I'm a working class guy, just fighting and doing it as a hobby, and it's you know, it was all out of respect out of for everybody involved in the whole thing to put the show on. You know, it was out of, all out of respect. That whole fight was about respect, honor. Like, yeah, because we get dropouts all the time, yeah. right? You know, I mean, you've you've had dropouts yep. on you, haven't you? Oh, I've had six of them for one fight. And it just sucks. You put in the people who do put in the training time, and you're an experienced uh, fighter as far as amateurs go. So, you, so you felt what you're telling the audience is that you know that you felt comfortable saying, "Yeah, I'll I'll step in and take a fight tonight." You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think he was at that time. Mike was five and zero. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. I had the experience edge. I'm a wrestler. I know he's a striker. Granted, the 12 hours of the rough, I'm not using that as an excuse for why I was a punching bag. I'm just saying, <laughs> it, had, it might have had a little bit to do Swinging with it. Swinging a hammer all day might have yeah, tired you out. it might have had know? a little to do with it, but that's not a real excuse. Yeah. You know? But I took the fight. It's, it's, it's a sport. It's mixed martial arts. He did what a mixed martial artist would do and not a cage fighter. Right on. And that's what people lost sight of, I guess. I mean, if you, I got 100 or to almost all of my fights are on YouTube. You can watch them all, and you'll see. I've always helping the guy up, shaking hands. You know, it's. it's I I remember it from the my first fight off the streets at 145. You were there. Yeah. You were sitting back there as a Jason Stoner show. Yeah. You were, you were there. <laughs> you were there. You've always been there. I mean, I don't Thanks, think man. I don't think Michigan Appreciate MMA that. would be the same without mugs. It wouldn't be the same without people like Mike that are actually giving us the exposure that we need people by keep... being honorable and not not punching me no more i mean i i i thought i could beat him still honest honest sorry mike i'm being honest but i thought i could beat him still i said second round i'm still in this you know any anybody that's trained a day in their life says oh i can i can still win i can still win and if you as soon as you say i, I can't win no more you lost as soon as you said i can't do it you, you're done regardless of how many more minutes you fight but it's, it's a great experience i'm i'm overwhelmed with the influx of people yeah. So you got anything to say to the people who think that there's? You got anything to say to the people who think that there's something wrong with the Mike did? You gotta know. You gotta know Mike. If you knew, if you got to talk to the kid, there's there's nothing wrong with what he did. I don't take it to heart. So nobody out there should definitely take it to heart. I met the kid. He's a really good guy. He he did it out of respect and purely respect. That's it. He said you showed up for the fight. The other guy backed out four hours ago. You got a phone call, you said you'll be there, you showed up, you got your hands wrapped, you get stepped in that ring. You deserve it. That was his That was his reason. He deserved it for showing up alone. Are you going to get back in the uh, training circuit and maybe train a little harder? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that's that's neither here nor there. I mean, that just because it's a hobby don't mean you shouldn't train, you know what I, I mean? Still, I, I get it in over with John Price. Right on. Me and him. Who are my boy yeah, John, man? Yeah, buddy. John yeah, Price. buddy! That's... I. You know, that's the difference between a boxer and a Muay Thai guy. I had no idea of them angles. I'm, I, I know boxing. I can box. I don't right. know Muay Thai. I've never been out there for uh, Mr. Peter Jeanette. I want to 
take some Muay Thai with you. Um, you'll probably see that. Yeah, he's a great yeah, instructor, that's, man. That'll, that'll probably the guy is a fierce, fierce man. That's, and he teaches just pure aggression, just, the, you know. The Spartans have came, their striking alone has came a long way since he's been added into the mix over there. Oh, yeah. Like, I've just been watching them guys grow. I've helped, they've made me grow because I've trained with, oh, my God. I've got tapped out so many ways by Sequoia and Ann. And that's why I'm a, I'm a ground guy. They'll tell you, stay standing with Jeremy. If you're a 25 er don't don't wrestle me. You know, try to punch me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> right on. You got a fight lined up? Uh, it, Steve Gossett for Mad Men Promotions. He, uh, June got, 28th, right? June 28th. Uh, yeah, down back down in Hillsdale. Yeah, I think I, we're covering I that one, say, if I'm not Amateur mistaken. Amateur Combat Sports Live is covering <laughs> that one. I won a 125 title down there in April. And fighting champ. Right on, man. I might as well go down and defend it the next time they have a show. Yeah. No, Jeremy, straight up, man, it's been it's been an awesome ride, bro. This has been a crazy, well, like, just, five, six years, man, and we've just it. been rocking this shit out, and, and, you know, watching you come up, I mean, there's there's probably a handful of the, mich- of the Jackson fighters out of Jackson that are still going at it strong, you know, a lot of them we've seen come and go, mm-hmm. and uh, one, a few of them once in a while we'll see them fight, like, you know, once every six to ten months, the you know, fighters. Yeah, yeah, you know. But uh, but now you've been strong in it and in it to win it and just having fun with it and I think everybody realizes that and you know you're highly respected amongst Prison City and Mad Men MMA and you know you're one of their top ranking fighters in both those circuits and I'm sure if you expanded over to the west or east side of the state you'd probably do the same. 125s are no joke around Michigan. Oh yeah, they're fun. You know, yeah, we got a lot of them. You know, I don't even think the whole nation might even have as many 125, 135, 115. Oh man, I've seen some of these 110, 115s I'm coming up. You that's know? where I, that's Mike, the Mike, uh, Mike Pantanko. I can't say his last name. That's our one. That's the 115er to watch right there. Right. I think there's one other 115 that I can recall off the top of my head, and that's uh, Tyler Hazel's made it to 115. Yeah. And that's what that's from Travis Rhodes. I fought. Now you remember Trevor Morris, right? Yeah, Monster Morris. Yeah, now he's coming in at 35s now. Is he? And he's trying to take the 35s by storm now. I remember you you didn't have a match against him, did you? No. No, I, never at 35, I've no. With him. He, when he was over at Jackson MMA, I've got to train with right. him a little bit. Yeah, so you've you know, had I, your circle with a oh, lot yeah. of these guys training. I, I, and I could, I, I'm a constant cross trainer. Right. I will go train with everybody and anybody if I yeah. have the time to do so. See, that's why I don't I don't discredit people off the bat when they say they're, you know, the announcer will be like, an independent fighter, and people are like, you know, people that are in the know and in the, in the industry are usually like, oh, well, you know, he's just a basement fighter, you know? But I've known you, and I've known where you've been and who you've sat in classes with and who you've trained with, and, you know, you're not, you're not just like you told them earlier, you're not just some slouch, man. So we're, we're proud to say, you know, everyone needs to watch Jeremy just as much as, you know, um, they're watching anyone else on, on the on the tube right now. And Mike definitely uh, may have got Jeremy on the stand-up, and that was for sure, but I would love, would you love, would you would you do a rematch? I, I don't think I would want, I, I grown to befriend him too much yeah like like i consider him a friend without i have to go hang out with him he's like i know he's an amazing con- guy con- it's impossible not to like him we're but. in constant contact yeah since that fight it's like at least once a week we're saying something right. to each other hey you know how's everything going i'm gonna get in there and let you do that in training yeah you know, show me them angles you know show me where what i was missing you know right like where it's just new angles. Muay Thai is new angles, and I don't, I couldn't comprehend it in the fight. Oh, it's Not insane. Sure it's insane. It's crazy. Tubes of toothpaste. Mm-hmm. I was and back training five days later. Mushing your body up like tubes of toothpaste. Five days after that fight with me and Mike. Yeah. I, back, I was at Jackson MMA. That's cool, man. That's <laughs> back, cool. Back, he wasn't there. I was out there, but I kept on getting hit. I did something to my shoulder. That night was the first night of one of my, my first fight as well. Yeah. You know, that was the first night mm-hmm. I fought. I tore my shoulder up something fierce, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I, I tore like the rotator that. cups, what Brandy said. Our, our local our local nurse, Brandy. She's awesome. Brandy yep. Sakula, big shout out on the nurse end of things. Nerd. <laughs> she is too, man. She's like a hardcore Star Wars fanatic and shit, man. So you got anybody to give shout outs to? Your girl, your kids? Uh, what do you got, man? Yeah. Mom, God? Shout out to my, my girl for putting up with me during my 20-pound weight cuts to get to 125. There she is. Um, shout out to you know to Jackson MMA, Jason Muggs for covering all our events and making it possible for you to see this. Um, 
Habit Greenhouse is where I work. Free po promo for them. Uh, they're, they're great. They help me out. They'll give me time off if I need it. They let me cut weight in the greenhouses. Really cool. Really hot. Um, it's about uh, John Price. You know, Jackson MMA guy, but he has a gym in his basement. But it's a fully functional gym. Steve Gossett's always gave me love. And it's about, in the MMA world, that's, that's about all. That's Joe, your Sharp. Beef, that's Joe Sharp. You rock, brother. Anthony Michael Sequoia, you guys always keep me on my toes with my grappling. I just need to get striking. Oh, look, his memory starts trickling in. He's like, oh, yeah, don't yeah, let me forget, guy, man. Guy, I just need right to get on. my striking on, fellas. You know, I'll be back. Cool, cool. Fist it up, bro. All right, man. Peace <laughs> out.